this is a story of two dads one has so many degrees and one is a high school dropout one would i be in poor and in so much death one would i be in rich in fact one of the richest in hawaii here in this book rich dad guides two boys on their path to financial freedom this story shares the differences of each dad's mentality towards money poor dad says oh i can't afford this while rich dad says how can i afford this this book gives the financial intelligence you missed out growing up. The financial intelligence that is passed on from generation to generation by wealthy families. Hello there, my name is Truth and if you are new here, you are welcome to the channel. And if you are a returning subscriber, what's up, what's up, what's up. So today I want to share with you 7 takeaways I learned from the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. In fact, this is the first personal finance book I ever read. I'll share the story with you at the end of the video, so you want to watch till the end. Anyways, let's get straight into the book. Number one, the rich don't work for money. The poor and middle class work for money, but the rich have money work for them. Robert's rich dad, whom we will refer to as much in this book, is his friend Mike's dad. So when he was nine years old, he and his friend went to their rich dad and asked him that they want him to teach them how to make money or how to become rich. And he said, okay, he will teach them, but he's going to employ them at his workshop. And every Saturday they will come and work for 10 cents per hour and they agree to work. But even as a young boy or as a nine-year-old boy, 10 cents was very small for Robert, but he kept on working. And when you read through the story, this is the lesson you will get from it. When it comes to money, most people want to play it safe and secure. They will settle for low-paying jobs, they will blame their bosses and the government, but fear keeps them in the same job for years. The fear of not paying their bills, the fear of starting over, the fear of being fired makes them become slaves to money. At the point, they might protest about the low paying jobs or the low wages they receive, but from the book he says that everyone or almost everyone has a price or most people have a price. They have a price because of fear and greed. The fear of being without money motivates us to work hard and once we get paid, greed and desire starts us thinking of all the wonderful things money can buy for us and then the pattern is set. You get up in the morning, go to work, you get paid, you pay your bills, you come home, the next morning go to work and the same pattern continues and once they increase your wages, you also increase your spending and in the book it is referred to as the rat race. And so let's go back to the story of the two boys. So these boys kept working and working for the 10 cents and one day rich dad comes to tell them that he won't pay them again but they have to keep working because they said they wanted to learn about money and how to make money and not him paying them so they kept working but Robert was even scared to tell his poor dad, his actual dad that he was working for free. Hold on to the thought that the rich make money work for them and let's explore other points. Number two. Educate in personal finance. It's not about how much money you make, but how much money you keep. Robert says that money without financial intelligence is money soon gone. He gives examples of athletes who are very rich at 25, and by the time they are 40, they are sleeping under the bridge. They were making all the money when they were young and in their career, but because they lacked financial education, at the end of their career, they have nothing to write home about. Same with people who win the lottery. A person is poor today, tomorrow a person wins the lottery and becomes rich. And if you don't have financial education, that money is soon gone and in a few years time you go back to how you were. He says that most people go to the university and their education ends there. So if you are looking at school to make you rich, then you are probably looking at the wrong place because our education system is designed in such a way that it trains you to be a good employee and hardly trains you to be a good employer. And so Robert says that the worst thing that can happen to anyone is to stop learning after graduation. And if you want to be rich, then you have to be financially literate. Number three. Know the difference between an asset and a liability. The rich buy assets, the poor and the middle class buy liabilities they think are assets. 
So Robert says that the number one rule to understanding financial literacy is to know the difference between an asset and a liability and to buy more assets. So basically an asset is something that puts money into your pocket and a liability is something that takes money away from your pocket. So is your phone an asset or a liability? I don't know. So he says that most of the time people say that, oh, I am in debt, so I need to make more money. But most of the time, making more money doesn't solve the problem. If you have the habit of spending all you earn, it means an increase in income also will likely result in an increase in expenses, which you might end up not be able to pay your debt. And most of our problem or financial problem in life is trying to keep up with people. And he says that, I mean, live your life in such a way that you don't try to keep up with certain people and try to keep your expenses down and your liabilities down and push more of your money into your assets column or build your assets column. Number four, mind your own business. And mind your own business here means that build and keep your asset column strong. He says that most people at the end of their working days will have nothing to show for. And it doesn't mean that you should quit your day job, but keep your day job and push most of your income into real assets or build real assets from it. And examples of real assets can be bonds, can be mutual funds, income generating, real estate, royalties like just something that you put your money into that gets you more money or makes you more money instead of things you keep buying that takes money away from you number five the rich invent money whilst we leave college or graduate from college or graduate from university most of us get to know that it is not the degrees that really matters again or even the good grades we made but financial genius requires technical knowledge and courage Develop financial IQ, I mean learn about finances to have more options and you have to keep learning. If you cling to old ideas then you have to work harder to make money. Times are changing and so you also have to be financially smart. So from this point he says that the rich are creative and they take risk, like they take calculated risk. So on your path to financial freedom at a point in time you have to be courageous to take certain risk. Number six work to learn and don't work for money he says that it's easier to make money when you have the necessary skills so try to educate yourself learn sales learn business systems learn all the things you think you need to learn and most people like an example he gave in the book that really resonates with me most people can fry nicer chicken more than kfc like kfc gets all the sales or makes all their money or people keep coming back to KFC because of their business systems. So it's, it's easier to make money when you have all the skills you need. And so all in all, education is more, is more important than money because at the end of the day, if you lose all the money you have, since you still have the skills, you can always just hop back into whatever you were doing in the first place. And so for the past six points, I have spoken about so many different things from assets to liabilities, to financial IQ, financial literacy and all that. But one of the things that can even prevent you from building an abandoned asset column, even if you are financially literate, is certain obstacles that can stand in your way. So I'm going to point out these obstacles to you. And yeah, that's my last point. So let's get straight into it. And number seven is overcoming obstacles. And our first obstacle to overcome is fear. Overcoming the fear of losing money. Even the rich has this fear. But Robert says that it's usually not the fear itself, but how you handle it. So if you hate risk and worry, start early. So he says that most people are so afraid of losing that they actually lose. The pain of losing money is far greater than the joy of winning money or making more money, which is a bit weird. So if you hate losing, play it safe and go with a balanced investment. Our second obstacle is overcoming the obstacle of cynicism. Most of us have doubts. I'm not good enough. What if so so and so is doing better than me? And he says that at a point in time, you have to stop worrying about what other people will think and overcome this obstacle so that you'll be able to go ahead to do your investments and do whatever you want to do with your money. A third obstacle to overcome is laziness. He says that busy people are often the laziest. <laughs> this point was a bit funny, but can be true. And he says that people are usually so busy that they don't take care of their wealth. Don't be like people. So 
and so don't have a lazy mindset with the i can't afford attitude instead you should be asking yourself how can i afford our next point is habits our lives are as a reflection or our lives are a reflection of our habits even more than our education so have the habit of paying yourself first and he says that if you pay yourself first, that is like using your money to invest or save or all those things for you and you even owe other people since they will come after you and come after your life it will push you to seek other forms of income and our last obstacle to overcome is arrogance he actually defines arrogance as ego plus ignorance and he says that most people use arrogance to hide their ignorance and that if you're ignorant in a particular subject or a particular area like humble yourself and learn or allow other people to teach you don't use your arrogance to hide all your ignorance it's better to learn to humble yourself and learn and know the right thing than by being arrogant so okay so we have come to the end but not the end i promised you a story anyways don't forget to subscribe and like let's go straight into the story so i think five years ago yeah i was in second year in the university and it was my birthday and it was a saturday so i went for a union meeting in the morning and then i came back in the afternoon and i was exhausted but when i entered the room my roommate was having a visitor and when i entered and we all got into talking and my roommate told this guy that oh today is her birthday and he was like oh he wished me a happy birthday and he was happy and he said he's a september born so we even started making fun of my roommate who is in a september born that oh september bones are special and blah 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 and all those things so we all got into talking and this guy removed the book and said since today is your birthday i'm going to give you this book to read i mean which dad poor dad i said okay prior to that i never heard of the book or read anything related to finance or anything and he said when i'm done i should give the book back to his friend and she'll get it so that is not the book i bought this book by myself after after i read the book so i he left and then i said oh let me just open and see what this book is about when i opened i said the book was talking to my soul like i got up and took a book a diary and then i started jotting down the point my roommate even said hey why are you so serious like that? i said you don't understand what is going on here so let me give you a background story so prior to this day i had never really thought of the topic of money or discussed anything relating to money or the subject of money at all so i grew up i mean nobody said anything but i just grew up with the mindset that go to school make sure you make all the good grades when you graduate you get a job and then life goes on so i never thought of investing and starting a business or all those things i didn't have any idea on that so when i read this book and this man was talking about how most people live their life like the rat race go to school when you finish get a job and all those things it was like he was talking directly to me and i'm so grateful to this guy i know probably he won't see this video for giving me that book to read because it was the beginning of me reading so many other personal finance books and even more self-help books so i'm really grateful to him and the funny thing about this book is that it's not like when i finished reading it i started investing or i started a business or anything but it changed my mindset like i how i looked at life changed completely i had to unlearn certain things i had to let go of certain ideologies and i'm i'm so grateful and i've read so many books and i've learned so many things over the years and so yeah that is the story and so share this share this video with your friends and even your enemies let everybody learn about money and the subject of money and the concepts about money subscribe leave a comment have you read this book okay recently this book has become like a household name everybody has probably read it or heard about it so what have you learned from this book or even from this video leave a comment down below and i've also made a video about the psychology of money i'll link it somewhere up there it's also one of my favorite personal finance books in fact i read that book twice this year so if you want to see that video anyways stay safe and i'll see you in my next videos bye bye